So good morning and welcome everyone to this lecture. This is uh, thermal expansion lecture number two. And in the previous class, I think we were dealing with thermal stress. Do we remember the thermal stress? Yes or no? Yes, sir. Uh, we were dealing with thermal stress. We had seen thermal stress when the temperature of a body rises, the thermal stress is compressive. And when the temperature of the body falls, the thermal stress is tensile. We remember this? Yes, sir. Uh, I can't take you back to the last class because something has happened with my one note. And that class has disappeared. The only thing that is left from that class is these two diagrams. We had discussed thermometry. And we had seen the different uh, the 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 relation between temperature scales. We had also seen the relation between um, um, that. We also seen that uh, liquid temperature, uh, liquid thermometers, gaseous thermometers, resistance thermometers. Do we remember this? Yes, I just sir. can't take you back because the note has disappeared somehow. I don't know what has happened. Yeah, we remember this, yes or no? Yes, sir. Baka? Baka. Then, uh, remember, we are dealing with uh, thermal expansion of solids. And as I told you, this thermal expansion of solids can be of three types depending on the dimension. If one dimension is very large, we call it linear expansion. And that is what we are dealing with. In fact, we are dealing with uh, the different... Uh, uses of linear expansion where this linear expansion comes we have seen one case where if i clamp the rod from both the sides uh, the thermal stress comes into the rod that is because of the linear expansion of the rod yes or no yes. the second use of this is variation of time period of a pendulum So the next use is variation of time period of a pendulum clock. Now we have seen a lot about this uh, um, pendulum clock. Simple harmonic motion of a simple pendulum. I had given you a lot of cases. Do we remember all those cases? Yes, sir. Okay. Now is the test of how much you remember. What is the time period of a Simple pendulum. Now, this simple pendulum can be made into a pendulum clock. And in olden days, where even in Hyderabad, we have got somewhere you will have a clock tower and you have a large pendulum attached to a clock. And depending on the time period of that pendulum, that clock works. What was the time period of a simple pendulum? See, no one remembers time two period. Pi under root L by G, sir. Two pi under, under root L naught. Let me write it as by G. In fact, I had seen that it is equal to G effective. We had seen different different cases in lifts and this and that and uh, inside water and this and that. Do you remember all those cases? Yes, sir. I hope that you remember this. Now, this pendulum clock. Now, it has a very large pendulum. And I might have told you that uh, uh, it is also known as a seconds uh, pendulum because the time period is two seconds. Do we remember it? Okay. Now, what we are going to do now, this uh, pendulum clock has a big uh, pendulum and this big pendulum has a length. Now, G, wherever you create this clock, G will remain constant at that place. But if there is a large if there is a temperature difference between summer and winter, as you can see right now in North India, it's around 10 degrees. In summer, it goes to around 40 degrees. So there is a vast temperature difference of 30 degrees between the summer and the winter. The length of the pendulum is going to change. Yes or no? Yes. And since the length of the pendulum is going mm -hmm. to change, what will happen is the time period of this clock is going to change. Yes or mm -hmm. no? The time period of this uh, clock is going to change. Now, this uh, L naught normally is the length is the length of the 
pendulum or pendulum clock at the temperature where that clock is calibrated or that clock gives you the correct time. I call that temperature, let us see, at theta naught. Now, if the temperature changes, the length of this pendulum clock will change. If the length of pendulum clock changes, the time period changes. If the time period changes, then the clock will either go fast or it will get slow. Do we understand this? Yes or no? Yes, sir. Now, can you tell me if temperature of the place is more than theta naught, what will happen to the time period? If the temperature of the place becomes more than theta naught, what will happen to the time period? Suppose the clock is calibrated at 10 degrees Celsius. The temperature has become 40 degrees Celsius. What will happen to the time period? If I say that the new time period is T dash, this T dash will become 2 pi root over L by G, where L is the new length at temperature theta. If theta is more than theta naught, what will happen? No one understands it. This L is the length at theta. If theta is more than theta naught, then what will happen? No one knows it. No one understands it. It's not a question of physics, it's a question of common sense. No one knows it. Okay, then note it down. If theta is more than theta naught, no one understands it. If theta is more than theta naught, your time period T dash will be more than the time period T. The time period of clock will increase. If the time period of the clock increases, the clock will become slow and it will start to lose time. But if your theta, the temperature becomes less than the temperature theta naught, your time period becomes less, your clock becomes fast and it starts to gain time. If I find out the difference between T dash and T, I will get this answer. T dash minus T divided by T will be equal to root over L minus L dash, sorry, L minus L naught divided by L naught. And if you put the values, you will get root over 1 plus alpha into delta theta, where delta theta is the difference in temperature. Taking binomial expansion, you can write it as, sorry, I've written it as, I've written it wrongly, sorry, 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 sorry. I've written it wrongly. From here, I should write it at um, L minus L naught divided by L naught. It will become root over alpha into delta theta. By taking binomial expansion, we can write it as half alpha delta theta. Actually, I should not have written it like this way. Let me not ask you to remember all this. You just remember it like this. T dash minus T upon T will become half alpha into delta theta and this t dash minus t divided by t is the time gained time gained or time lost by the clock per second in one second how much fast or how much slow the clock becomes that will be given by half 
alpha into delta theta and how do i get this it is simply by taking the binomial expansion taking the difference and taking the binomial expansion and this is what you must remember this is the time gained or time lost by a clock in one second have you noted this down okay i'll give you one minute to note it down <clears throat> Then let's move ahead and uh, look at the next uh, question. Remember, one question may come from here. If it comes from this part, it may be a question just like this. They may not even change the values. You may, you may just get same question. So this is the question that comes. A pendulum clock consists of an iron rod connected to a small heavy bob. It is designed to keep correct time at uh, 20 degrees Celsius. How fast or slow it will go in 24 hours? Remember, 24 hours at 40 degrees Celsius. So first of all, you have to tell me whether it will go fast or will it, will it go slow? Will it go fast or will it go slow? How fast or, or sorry, fast is not there. How slow will it go in 24 hours? Your time begins now, and you will not get 24 hours to solve it. <clears throat> so, how much time it will lose <clears throat> in one day? Delta T, it will lose in one day, will be equal to half. One second. <clears throat> Hmm. One second is <coughs> half into alpha into the change in temperature 20 degrees Celsius multiplied by 86,400. That is the number of seconds in a day. <coughs> the answer will be 1.04 seconds. Cannot get loose 10 seconds, otherwise, it will be of no use. <coughs> Do we understand this? Yes. How questions in this cat <coughs> in this category <coughs> how questions in this category come? Do we understand this? Yes, sir. Okay. So <coughs> Say the question is same. So we have understood this concept. <coughs> that takes us to the next uh, concept. And that is not very popular. It has not come many times, but uh, in any case, we should do it. Measurement of length <coughs> by a scale. Now, you must understand that <clears throat> you would have used a rule or a scale and you use it. Most of the rules or scales that you use, <clears throat> sometimes they are made up of metals. Yes or no? Now, <clears throat> that metal scale has got markings. Now, that metal scale is marked at a particular temperature. <clears throat> if the temperature of the surrounding becomes less or more than that, less or more than the marking temperature, the markings will not be correct. Yes or no? <clears throat> if the temperature increases, marking will be farther apart and the scale will measure less. Yes or no? <clears throat> yes, sir. If the temperature falls, marking will come closer 
and the scale will measure more. Yes or no? Yes. <coughs> that means depending on the temperature, the true value and the measured value would be different. Now, this is we are talking about the scale only. The object itself, the object itself The object itself can have expansion of its own. Do we understand this? Yes. Do we understand what I'm saying? <clears throat> the object is the metal itself. So on changing temperature, <clears throat> the length of that uh, object will also change. Do we understand this? Yes, sir. So both can change. I have not seen a question where both uh, changes come. But I will give you a general formula where <clears throat> both may change and you can find out <clears throat> the true value. So this is the formula that you have to use. We are not going to go into lengthy discussion of how this formula has come. TV. What do you mean by TV? It's not television. True value. True value, the actual value, will be equal to MV. What is MV? It is not MTV. Measured. Measured value into 1 plus alpha into theta minus theta naught. Where... <clears throat> you have try you should uh, try to understand what what does everything mean here what is theta temperature actual temperature theta I is the measuring temperature the temperature at we are uh, at which you are measuring the body what is theta naught Calibration. You understand the meaning of calibration? Calibration temperature. <clears throat> calibration temperature. <clears throat> this alpha is actually <clears throat> <clears throat> this alpha is actually alpha O minus alpha S. What is alpha O and what is alpha S? What is alpha O and alpha S? <coughs> what is alpha O and alpha S? Alpha O is the alpha of the object which is being measured. Do we understand this? And alpha S is the coefficient of expansion of the scale. <clears throat> Do we understand this? Yes or no? Now you might not get a question you might never get a question where the object will change its length. That question I have never seen. So in most of the cases, the question that you are going to see is where only alpha of the rule will be given to you. So in that case, the formula becomes 1 minus alpha into theta minus theta naught. Do we understand this?
Have you noted this down? Sir. Yes. Sir, if temperature increases, that means scale will expand no sir. Yes, scale will expand. So the scale will show reading more, no, sir. No, it will show less reading. Because the scale has expanded, the distance between the measurement has become more. Do we understand this? Okay, sir. Okay, then let us uh, solve this question. And try to get the answer. A bar is measured with a one-year caliper is found to be 180 mm long. The temperature during the measurement is 10 degrees Celsius. The measurement error will be, what will the measurement error if the scale of the vernier caliper was graduated at, 10 de at, at 20 degrees Celsius? It was graduated at 20 degrees Celsius. So I'll give you two minutes to give me the answer. Just a minute, I think uh, here I have <clears throat> alpha object uh, minus alpha this. <clears throat> I think I have given the alpha wrong here. Should be alpha scale minus alpha object. Otherwise, the answer will become <clears throat> reverse of it. Alpha of scale minus alpha of object. Then only with increase in temperature, true value will be more than this. So just correct it. Just correct it. Yes, sir. <clears throat> okay, sir. Got my point? Yes, sir. Okay, just correct it. Now you solve the question. So how are we supposed to do this? We just need to apply the formula. Now the... <clears throat> Temperature of measurement is 10 degrees Celsius and uh, the scale was calibrated at 20 degrees Celsius. Will it measure more or will it measure less? Less, sir. Will it measure more or will it measure less? Okay. Measures. So true value is equal to measured value into 1 plus, you can write it as alpha minus alpha naught into theta minus theta naught. So the true value would be how much? Measured value is 180. <clears throat> 1 plus 1.1 1 .1 into 10 raised to the power minus 5 multiplied by 10 minus 20. So the percentage error will be 180 minus this. 180 minus this will be 1.1 1 .1 into 
into 10 raised to the power minus 4 divided by the actual is 180 multiplied by 100. <clears throat> so it will actually measure more, the true value would be less. It has to be the case. Do we understand this? <clears throat> Do we understand this? The scale is calibrated at... Sir, in percentage error... Uh... In numerator, we should multiply by 180, no, sir. Yes, 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 yes. There, there, there is 180 also, sorry. 180 also, I, I forgot, sorry. Correct, correct. Do we understand this? <clears throat> Remember, <clears throat> if the temperature uh, increases, the division becomes farther. Therefore, it will measure less, true value will be more. When the temperature decreases, divisions become smaller, it will measure more, true value would be less. Do we understand this? Yes, sir. Everyone understands this? Yes or no? Yes, sir. Let me give you one more so that uh, you are able to understand this uh, concept. Even I get confused sometimes. I know the concept, but uh, you know, when the formula comes, I sometimes get confused. And I always, and I sometimes write the reverse one. I don't know why. These things trouble me a lot. I'm very bad with ratio proportions and everything. I always take the wrong ratios. I don't know why. Anyways. <clears throat> this is the next question. And I hope this will clear all your doubts. A steel ruler, exactly 20 meter, 20 centimeter long, 20 centimeter long, is graduated to give correct measurements at 20 degrees Celsius. So it is graduated at 20 degrees Celsius and it will give correct measurements at 20 degrees Celsius. Will it give uh, readings that are too long at, or too short at lower temperatures? At lower temperature, will it give higher values or lower values of the actual? <clears throat> At lower temperature, does it give you higher values or lower values? Higher values. At Lower temperatures, it will always give you higher values. Do we understand this? Yes. What will be the actual length of the ruler when it is used in the desert temperature? So when temperature becomes more, the length of the ruler will increase. Yes or no? So you can find out the length of the ruler. How will you find out the length of the ruler? This will be equal to L0 into 1 plus alpha into delta theta. They have not used this to measure anything. They are just asking out the length of the ruler. I think you can find out the length of the ruler. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Everyone understands this? Yes, sir. Everyone has understood the concept of what is happening here. Yes or no? No, yes. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay, that takes us to the next uh, heading. We are still into, we are still into expansion of solids. We get to the second heading. It is known as superficial or aerial expansion. Superficial or aerial expansion. What does that mean? 
Now, if you have a two-dimensional body, and what do I mean when I say two-dimensional body? I have a plate. Now, if you think of a plate or you think of a sheet of paper, it actually has three dimensions, but the length and breadth are very large compared to the thickness of that sheet. Yes or no? So, so even though it is a three-dimensional object, we can treat it as a two-dimensional object. We understand this? If such a two-dimensional object, then two-dimensional object will have an area. It has an area, and if you heat it up, the area will increase. Yes or no? Yes, yes or no? Yes. The change in area will be directly proportional to the original area. The change in area will be directly proportional to delta theta. And this change in area will depend on the material. Yes or no? If I put all yes. of these things together, I can find out the formula for the change in area. The change in area will be equal to beta into A into delta theta. Do we understand this? Yes, sir. Where beta is a constant, which is known as coefficient of? Aerial expansion. Aerial expansion. Do we understand this? Yes, sir. You can write. So, I'll give you time to write. First, uh, just uh, see what I am telling you. So, from here, you can find out also the value of beta. Beta will be, if you want to write it in the differential form, you can write it as d a by d theta multiplied by 1 by a. Do we understand how I've written this? Yes, sir. I've written it just in the uh, differential, differential form. form. Nothing else. The final, temp uh, the final area a can be written as a naught into 1 plus beta into delta theta. Do we understand this? Yes, sir. This is known as aerial expansion or expansion in area. The unit of aerial expansion is per degree Celsius or per Kelvin. Do we understand this? Yes, sir. Have you noted this down? You want Unmute. time? Have you wrote it down? Yes, sir. Okay. Then you can do this simple problem. A plane lamina has an area of 2 meters square at 10 degrees Celsius. What is the area at? It's not aerial. It should be area. What is the area at 110 degrees Celsius if the superficial expansion is this one? I'll give you a minute to give me the answer. What we need to hear, what we need to do here is just put the formula. A will be equal to A naught into one plus alpha into delta theta. I think you can do this. Just put the formula and get the answer. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Then let's move ahead and move on to the third type of expansion. What will be the third type of expansion? Volume expansion or cubical expansion. Volume expansion or cubical expansion. And let me just straight away write the formula for this. You will be able to understand, yes or no? Delta V change in volume will be equal to V. Uh, will be equal to gamma into v into delta theta do we understand what i've written here 
or do I need to explain? Do I understand? Uh, do we understand what we have written here? Yes or no? I can write the final volume as V naught or um, let me write here as V naught. V naught into 1 plus gamma into delta theta. Do we understand what I'm writing here or shall I explain? This gamma is known as the coefficient of volume or cubical expansion. Do we understand this? Yes or no? Also, you must understand the relation between <clears throat> alpha, beta, and gamma. Alpha is to beta is to gamma for a solid is 1 is to 2 is to 3. Basically, what I mean to say here is beta will be 2 times alpha and gamma will be 3 times alpha. Will you remember this? Can you remember this? Yes or no? No, yes. We understand this beta. We understand this. Okay. Now, since we have understood the volume of cubical expansion, you can also write one more small thing here and I'm just going to write it here on only. Variation of density with temperature. Very... Variation of density of any body with temperature. Now, we know that mass by volume is equal to density. Yes or no? Yes or no? Now, when the temperature of the body is changed, mass remains constant. Yes or no? Mass of the body remains constant. So if the volume decreases, volume decreases, the density will increase. Yes or no? Do we understand this? Yes, sir. So I can write the change in density of the solid will be minus gamma into rho naught into delta theta. Because if the density, if the temperature increases, density decreases. Yes or no? So density at any temperature rho will be equal to rho. Density at any temperature rho will be equal to rho naught into 1 minus gamma into delta theta. So you can see this relation is actually coming as reverse of that relation. Do we understand this? Yes, sir. You can write this relation in this way or you can write the relation in this way also. It is rho naught divided by 1 plus gamma into delta theta. Since alpha is very small, both these relations are same because you can take 1 plus alpha delta theta from the numerator and put it into the denominator or you can take it from the denominator and put it into the numerator. Do we understand what I have written here? Yes, sir. Everyone has understood this? Yes, so no, no, or yes. yes sir. 
Okay. Now, Dancer. based on we have uh, noted this down. Dancer. Now there is uh, you will not get a direct question on uh, change in volume for a solid because the change in volume for a solid will always come with some sort of a liquid put into it. So we have to understand the expansion of liquids before going into that. But this is the one problem that I have seen. So if you can uh, give answer for this problem, we can go ahead. If the percentage change in length is 1% with the change in temperature of a cuboidal object, what is the percentage change in area and percentage change in volume? I think you can give the answer straight away. This is a question of percentage or error or measurement or you can call it a question of thermodynamics. Here, I'll give you two minutes. So how are we going to do this? Yes. Change in length upon original length into 100% basically becomes alpha into delta theta into 100%. It is given because of change in temperature. Change in area upon original area into 100% will be equal to what? Beta into delta theta into 100%. This is given as 1%. So how much is this then? Two percent because beta is two times of alpha. Change in volume upon original volume into hundred will be the change in volume percentage. Gamma into delta theta into hundred percent. Three percent. Anyways. Do we understand this? Yes, sir. Now we come to expansion of liquids. Expansion of gases will not be dealing. We are now going to deal with expansion of liquids. Now, can liquid expand in length? Can liquid expand in area? How many types of expansion of liquid will be there? Can a liquid expand in length? What? It will expand in volume. Does liquid expand in length? I have not seen any liquid expand in length. Nor I have seen any liquid expand in area. Liquid always expand in volume. volume. Liquids always expand in volume. So volume expansion is the only expansion. Volume expansion is the only expansion for liquid. And without uh, getting into much theatrics, I can state away right change in volume of the liquid will be gamma of the liquid in the into the original volume into delta theta. Yes or no? Yes, sir. So the final volume of the liquid will be V naught into one plus. Gamma L into gamma. delta theta. Remember this gamma L is very, very large compared to gamma S. What do you mean by gamma S? Gamma of the solid bodies. Solid bodies have a very less gamma as compared to the liquids. Do you understand this? Now since liquid expand in volume, 
variation of density also happens. So these are the only two things that you must remember about liquids. And again, without going into much, I can straight away write minus gamma initial into delta theta. So I can write gamma at any temperature will be gamma naught into one minus gamma L into delta theta. I hope you understand what I'm writing here. Or I can write this as gamma naught upon one plus gamma into delta theta. I just write gamma L so that I'm able to understand that I'm talking about the liquid. Do we understand this? Yes, sir. Yes, sir or no, sir? Yes, sir. Have you noted it down, sir? Yes, sir. Done, sir. The next setting that we are going to write is anomalous expansion of water. Have you heard this term, anomalous expansion of water? Yes or no? No, yes. Yes, sir. What is that, sir? Mm -hmm. Normally, what should happen with all liquids, including water, is when you increase the temperature, the density should decrease. Yes or no? Yes, sir. But with water between zero and degree, between zero and four degrees Celsius, water behaves in reverse fashion. So when you increase the temperature from zero to four degrees Celsius, the density of water does not decrease. In fact, it increases. Do we understand this? Yes, sir. And therefore, water has the highest density at how many degrees? Water has the highest density at one at four degrees Celsius, which is taken as 10 raised to the power 3 kg per meter cube. Because of this anomalous expansion of water, lakes will always freeze from top to bottom and not from bottom to top. Do we understand this? Lakes always freeze from top to bottom. It is because of this anomalous expansion of water. Water has maximum density at 4 degrees Celsius. Because of this, lake freeze from top to bottom. And the life, the marine life at the bottom of the sea or bottom of a lake, it does not freeze. And that is why they are able to survive extreme cold weather because as soon as your ice begins to form or snow begins to form from top to bottom, the temperature below that uh, snow level will always remain about 4 degrees Celsius and they are able to survive. Do we understand this? Yes, sir. We understand this? Anomalous expansion yes. of water. Have you heard about this? Yes or no? I'll give you one minute to note it down. Just draw this diagram and remember density of water is highest at 4 degrees Celsius. Now, whenever we talk about expansion of liquids, there are two terms that come. One is known as real expansion of liquid and the other one is known as apparent expansion of liquid. Now, what is this apparent expansion of liquid? You might have seen water boiling in a, in a steel uh, container or a beaker or maybe milk boiling in your steel container or beaker. Now, when you heat up the beaker or the container, you will see that the milk starts to spill out. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Now, when you see that the milk starts to spill out, you definitely see that the volume of the milk has increased. Yes or no? Mm -hmm. Yes or no? Yeah. When you see that the milk is overflowing, you definitely see the rise of or the increase in the volume of the milk. Yes or no? Sir, please repeat it again. But do you realize that apart from the milk, 
or the liquid getting expanded, the vessel in which you have heated up the liquid has also expanded. Yes or no? Sir, you're not clear, sir. When you are heating vessel, the vessel also expands apart from the liquid in the vessel. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Am I audible or not? Audible, sir. This is the vessel. When you heat up this vessel, you will start to see liquid flowing out. You definitely see that the liquid has expanded. It has increased in volume. But you must also realize when you are heating the vessel, the vessel also get expanded. Yes or no? Yes, sir. So whenever a vessel has a liquid and you see the expansion of the liquid, you do not see the real expansion of the liquid because the vessel also gets expanded. Yes or no? Yes, sir. And therefore, the expansion that you see is known as the apparent expansion of the liquid. What do you mean by apparent expansion of the liquid? If you have a vessel completely filled up with a liquid, initial volumes are same. Now, if the temperature of the liquid or the vessel is changed, the volume of the liquid will change, yes or no? Yes, sir. At the same time, the volume of the container will also change. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Some amount of liquid will overflow. What will be the amount of liquid that will overflow? That will be the amount, that will be the volume of the liquid subtracted by the volume of the container. Yes or no? Yes, sir. You can see the volume of the liquid getting expanded, but you will not see the volume of the vessel that is expanded. So whatever liquid spills, it is not the actual volume of the liquid that has expanded. It is the volume of the liquid expanded minus the volume of the solid expanded. Yes or no? Yes, sir. To get this term gamma L minus gamma C, where gamma L is the gamma of the container uh, of the liquid and gamma C is the gamma of the container. Yes or no? Yes, sir. This gamma is known as the coefficient of apparent expansion, which is gamma of the liquid minus gamma of the container. Do we understand this? Yes, sir. This gamma is known as the coefficient of apparent expansion. The expansion of liquid with respect to the container. Do we understand this? Yes, sir. This gamma L is known as the coefficient of real expansion. This is the real expansion, but you don't see that real expansion. You only see the apparent expansion. Do we understand this? Yes, sir. Everyone understands this. Yes or no? No, yes. Yes, sir. You can write this in this fashion. Coefficient of apparent expansion is the have you noted this down one minute No, did it down? Mm -hmm. Yes or no? Done, sir. Then you can note down differently as well. 
the coefficient of apparent expansion is apparent expansion divided by initial volume the coefficient of real expansion is real increase divided by initial volume do you are, are you able to understand this the coefficient of expansion of the vessel will be change in volume of the vessel divided by the initial volume and this comes the main punch point real expansion is equal to apparent expansion plus expansion of the vessel yes or no yes sir and uh, you can now write it in this fashion it will gamma real minus three times alpha because for solids normally the value of alpha is given do we understand this yes sir so this is all about real and apparent expansion that you must understand do we understand this yes or no no yes Yes, sir. I'll give you one minute, two minutes to note it down. Let me know once you are done. Yeah. Okay, then uh, this is one question that you will have to do based on what we have done. Real expansion, apparent expansion. Uh, liquid vessel, which is 100 centimeter cube, is completely filled with mercury. Is heated from 25 degrees Celsius to 75 degrees Celsius. What volume of mercury will overflow? You can easily find it out, yes or no? Yes. The coefficient of expansion of glass is given as 1.8 into 10 to the power minus 6. Remember, it is minus 6. Whereas for mercury, it is 10 to the power of minus 4. So you just have to find out how much is the volume of mercury that is going to overflow and what is the coefficient of apparent expansion. You can do it, yes or no? Yes, sir. Okay, I'll give you two minutes to give me this answer. So how are we supposed to do this? Simple no? You just have to find out the volume of liquid that has overflow delta V will be equal to V naught into 1 plus gamma liquid minus gamma solid or gamma vessel multiplied by delta theta. Just have to put the values here. What is the value of V naught? It is 100 into 1 plus gamma liquid is 1.8 into 10 to the power minus 6. You might have to do some calculations. Minus gamma S is 3 times 1.8 into 10 to the power of minus 6. Remember, for solid, in most cases, linear expansion is given. So multiply it by 3. Do we understand this? Do not do this mistake for solid or vessel all, always alpha will be given multiplied by 50 the answer that i have is 0 0.87 centimeter cube and that is the answer that we are looking at this gamma l minus gamma s becomes your coefficient of apparent expansion do we understand this yes sir well that finishes this part of the class we are uh, dealing with uh, thermal expansion. Two or three more points are left. Small, small points, which we will discuss in the next class. And in the next class, we'll also start and try to wind up calorimetry as well. Everyone is confident with this? Yes or no? Yes, sir. Do you have the sheets for this? Thermo thermodynamics? No, sir. Okay. I will send the sheet of thermodynamics. Try questions on that and uh, these many questions would be good enough for your exams. Okay. So take care and I'll see you in the next class. Have you understood everything in today's class? Yes, sir. Okay, then I'll meet you tomorrow you, and sir. I'll send the sheets. Yes, beta. Thank you. Okay, beta. Bye.